today we're going to be making this album in just a couple of hours using just one paper pad and one die. And actually we'll have plenty of paper left over to make a second and a third. This album packs plenty of spots for your pictures and for journaling. Hello everyone, it's Maddie Azar with Spectrum Art Creations for Graphic 45 Brand Ambassador Team. For this project, we're going to be using the lovely Graphic 45 Folder and Sentiments die set. It is full of great elements, including all kinds of sentiments and additional pieces. And we're also going to be using the magical Enchanted Forest paper line. So without much further ado, let's get right into creating today's project. In step one, we are going to die cut our folders. We are going to need 12 pieces that measure at least five and three quarters by eight inches. We're gonna need to cut 12 of those mini folders. In step two, we are going to take our cardstock folders and we're going to cut them in half. In step three, we're going to be trimming our tabbed inserts. Because our inserts, what we're gonna use as inserts is of course the perfect size. It was the other half of the file folder. We're gonna need to trim those down. In order for them to slide in and out of the pockets, we're gonna trim on the left and on the right hand side about a quarter of an inch. Of course, it all depends on how much you glue, how much adhesive you add to your pockets. If you need to trim some more, you most certainly can. Now the top is also going to be too tall. As you can see, it sticks out and it's gonna stick out even more once we add glue to the bottom. So we can mark the bottom with our pencil just to kind of get an idea of how much you need to cut I'm going to be cutting about three, um, three eighths off of the bottom and that is going to give me enough for it to be slightly shorter than our pockets and that's good. We need it to be shorter because again, we're going to add adhesive to the bottom, which is going to take away some of that height. The same thing from the left and the right hand side. We need enough room to add our adhesive on all three sides. For this project, we are only going to need six of the tabbed inserts. We can save the other six for another project. Next, we're going to round our corners and we're going to ink the edges. In step four, we're going to be creating templates in order to be able to cut out our decorative mats. Now to do this, we're going to need a piece of cardstock, a thick marker, and our die. We're going to trace the inside of our die, so that's going to give us a smaller size mat. But even with doing this, it is still not going to be small enough. So we are going to be cutting on the inside of that black line. And we're gonna be generous when I say we're gonna be cutting on the inside. Even beyond that, we're still going to have to do a little bit of trimming. You 
can see here just how generous I have cut inside of the black thick line. We now have the perfect template for creating our decorative mats. The good news is once you have done these templates, you can put them away with your die and you'll have them forever. So you get to reuse them over and over again. Now with this piece, remember we had trimmed some off the left, the right and the bottom. So we know that this one's going to be big even if we cut on the inside of the black line. This is what I meant when I said we're gonna have to do some additional trimming. So now we know we need to cut left, right, and bottom. So I'm going to use our already cut piece and I'm going to mark with my pencil to give me an idea as to how much I need to cut from left and right, and then I'm gonna use the same process to cut some off the bottom. And again, once we have this template, we can use it over and over again for additional projects in the future. In step five, we're going to choose our papers. And if you are not familiar with this gorgeous line, just take a peek. I'm gonna do a quick flip through of the papers. Absolutely great colors, very rich, beautiful greens, and um, like orangey reds and golden yellows. A beautiful paper line indeed and then of course you have the rich blacks too to kind of offset those colors which only enhances them and it makes them look even more vibrant As you can see, there is plenty to choose from, but with our papers now selected, it's time to move on to step number six. We are going to use our templates to cut out our decorative mats. Now, when tracing and cutting your papers, do keep in mind the orientation of your pages. I am using a thick permanent marker to make it a little bit easier for you guys to be able to see it on camera. Now you will notice that I'm going to flip over my template and that's because these are going to be my front and back covers. So six of our papers are going to be facing left and then six of our papers are going to be facing right. So make sure you keep that in mind when tracing and cutting.
And as you can see, we now have the perfect decorative mats to go on our pockets. And we will continue to do the exact same process for the pages that we have selected. Don't forget, you're going to need six left facing and six right facing. Now you can mix and match them if you'd like. I am going to be doing the exact same pages on both of my sides so they will actually face each other. Here are the papers that I've chosen starting with the front and back cover. Now you will notice that I have not glued my papers, they're being held by a paper clip. So what I've done is I've put them together so that I can make sure everything is in the proper order. I have two file folder to make the pockets as well as my two mats for each of the sets that I've paper clipped together. Now continuing on with step six, we need to do the same thing. We need to cut the mats for our inserts. We're going to need a total of 12 mats. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter um, because it's asymmetric, whether uh, we put it facing up, facing down, you just wanna be cognizant of course and keep an eye out that the pattern is going in the right direction and not upside down. Now, because the paper is so beautiful and double-sided, we can get four mats out of each of the pages. We will simply use two of the black side and then two of the red side, or an A and B. So the A side of the paper and the B side of the paper. Now, there's another way of doing this as well. And I wanted to mention that just in case, because I know some people do struggle with fussy cutting or doing detailed work uh, with scissors. So the other way to do this is to use your die and you would cut your decorative panels using your die. And then all we would do is we would trim our sides like we did before, left, right, and then the bottom. I'll do a really quick one just so you guys can see what I mean. So first we're going to cut our decorative piece like we normally would from just the actual die itself. We only need to cut the half piece with the tab. And then you can see the perforated line on there and that gives us a guide as to where um, the die would normally be folded. So we're going to cut from there and then we're going to trim that even further down so that it actually works as a smaller mat, decorative mat. So this is a great way to not have to do that detail cutting up at the top. All you have to do is focus on left, right, and bottom. And so there is another way to do your mats as well. So whichever method works best. Of course, to finish them off, we are going to round our corners 
and we're going to ink the edges. I'm going to be using the delicious Graphic 45 Hybrid inks. And now that our bases and mats are all done, it is time to move on to step number seven, which is adhering our mats. I am going to start with the tabbed inserts. And now that those are all done, they look so pretty, it is now time to do our pockets. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to use the mats and glue them down onto our pockets. Now, be careful. If you are making them the same way that I am, you do want to make sure that you stay in the right order so that the pockets can face each other or the decorative papers can face each other. If you're planning to do a mix and match and just have papers randomly in, you know, in different areas, then you do not need to be too cautious or concerned about this step. You can just glue it um, in any which order that you would prefer. Now, the decorative mats for our pockets are done. All that is left for us to do with these pieces is to close them up and turn them into pockets. But before we do that, we need to do the next step. And that is going to be step number eight. In this step, we are going to be creating our spine system. For this step, we're going to need a black piece of cardstock that measures 5 and 7 16 tall and we're going to cut it down into three pieces. The first piece is going to measure 2 and 3 quarters, the next one 2 and a quarter, and the last one 1 and 3 quarters. For the following step we're going to need a scoreboard or a stylus uh, ball pen and a ruler. We're looking at the three quarter of an inch marking on the scoreboard. We're going to need to score all of our pieces at three quarters of an inch from either side. So to make it very simple, we're going to score at three quarters. We're going to take that piece, we're going to flip it around, and we're going to score at three quarters of an inch again. We're going to repeat that with this next piece. Again, scoring at three quarters of an inch flipping our paper over to the other side and scoring at three quarters of an inch again. And then we'll repeat the exact same process with our last piece. With our scoring done, we're going to bring out the bone folder and burnish those score lines really well. That was quite simple, wasn't it? Pretty much our spine system is done.
you will notice that the spine system has a U shape. It almost looks like the letter U. And you will also notice that they all nestle perfectly inside of each other. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We are going to be adhering them one inside of the other, nestling inside to, from the largest to the smallest. It is a bit difficult to show this on screen with black paper, but I hope you guys can see this uh, quite well. All I'm doing is centering that piece right inside of the other one. And then I'm gonna do it again with the smallest. So again, we're going from largest to smallest, adhering only the center piece and making sure that it's centered. That was super simple, wasn't it? And that can be adjusted to add additional pages if you wanted to do so as well. But we're gonna move on to step number nine, which is adhering our pockets. So for this step, what we're going to do is we're going to bring back our pockets and we're going to be adhering the pockets on the left and on the right hand side of the each of the spine tabs. To do this, we're going to grab our first set of file folder panels and we're going to sandwich that black panel, that black uh, piece, right in between the two file folders. So one's going to go on the left and the other one on the right, or if you want to say one in the front, one in the back, and the black spine piece is going to be sandwiched right in between those. We're going to repeat the exact same process for all of our pieces. Now, I do have a very important tip, and that is when it comes to adhering the black tabs onto your file folders, it is extremely important that they are well adhered. If you do not glue them down really well, it's going to be a cause for your tab inserts, or if you're using tags or whatever it is you're going to be inserting into the pockets, it will not slide in smoothly. It will actually bump into that black spine piece every single time. Uh, and eventually it's going to end up lifting it and you know, you're just going to have to pull out that whole panel and adhere it very well. So please make sure that you adhere it very well, especially reaching all the way to the border uh, so that you have no black piece without any adhesive, okay? So hopefully that made uh, sense. Super important that that is well done for your project to bring you joy and of course to continue to work uh, year after year. I am using my bone folder to ensure that I have really good adhesion, that that glue really gets all the way to the edges. And then I always do a little bit of a test with my finger just to make sure that Again, I have glue everywhere. And once that is adhered to one side, all we have to do is add adhesive on the three sides of our next file folder panel and adhere that down. I like to lay it flat on the table so that I can make sure they butt up really nice and even. And as simple as that, we have our first set of pockets done. So we're going to continue to do that for the remaining of the black tabs.
all of our pockets are done, including our front cover. So now we can move on to step number 10, which is adding in our tabbed inserts. and our tabs look and fit great. Now our spine is a bit flimsy and we're gonna work on that. But before we do that, we are gonna work on our next step. Step number 11 is going to be adding a closure. Now you have lots of options here. I am going to be using some natural um, sorry silk you could use of course seam binding you could use laces you could use all kinds of uh, different closures you could do a metal one um, and of course you have the advantage that we are going to be able to hide it once we work on our next step which is going to be the spine reinforcer to the last step, step number 12. We are going to work on reinforcing that spine and being able to hide any adhesive or also any kind of a closure that we might have used, such as the one that I did. For this step, we're going to need another piece of heavy cardstock. You could also use your graphic 45 scraps. It is going to need to measure 2.25 in width by five and a half inches tall. And we're going to score that again. We're gonna use our scoreboard and we're gonna score half an inch from the left and half an inch from the right. So I'm going to use the exact same system that I used before. I'm gonna score at half an inch. Then I'm going to turn my paper, flip it around and score again at half an inch. Now, once we've given our spine reinforcer a really nice burnishing, we are going to need one more piece of paper. We're going to choose a piece of decorative paper for this, and it's going to measure five and a quarter tall by two and an eighth wide. This we're going to adhere right on top of our spine reinforcer, which is going to make it even stronger, but it's also going to give us a really nice beautiful looking finish. Of course, first we're gonna ink that up, making sure that we do not have um, any white on the sides. And then we're going to adhere that right onto our black reinforcement piece. And to finish the look, we are going to use a little bit of brown and of course, our delicious classic black. Now, the way that I usually glue the spines or the spine reinforcers is I glue the center first, so the middle piece, 
and then I come back in and I do my left side and then my right side, right? So first the center and then the sides one at a time. I just find that it adheres a lot better that way. But we are now done with our project. What do you guys think? Have you enjoyed it? I hope you crafted along. And if you haven't, uh, maybe you're just looking for the, you know, at it first to see how it all went and how it was going to go and if it was something that you would be interested in doing. And I hope it has been. I hope it has inspired you and I hope that you will create one uh, with us and you will, of course, share with uh, us in social media if you've made one whether it's on the Graphic 45 Facebook group or Instagram or YouTube. We would love, of course, to hear your comments down below. Which paper line do you plan to use? Maybe you're planning to use a different one. There are so many beautiful paper lines that sometimes that's the hardest part is just choosing uh, which line to use. We, of course, uh, <laughs> decided that we were going to make different multiple ones because you can actually get like three of these easily out of just one line out of one collection and of course if you have your patterns and solid pads that will even make it go even further you can also use your eight by eight pads so again lots of options and flexibility um, with this little project but it's a great way to be able to do an album in just a few hours and once you've done one it's so much easier to do the next one they just come together super quick after you've done the first one it just is a very easy project uh, to do in just a single afternoon so love to hear from you guys which line are you going to be using? Did you enjoy it? Uh, please give us some feedback, both ourselves and Graphic45. Love to hear what type of projects you like so that we can continue to bring you content that you enjoy. But as I mentioned, I had to make one more. So I did. I The prototype I actually made using this gorgeous collection, which if you're not familiar, is Little Things. And Little Things is just full of mushrooms and butterflies and gnomes and all those great little things that you would find in the backyard, right? Maybe in an enchanted forest. Super pretty. And for these mats, see, I did end up using the patterns and solids. So that's another great way to use your patterns and solids as well. So if you have some in your stash and you've had some scraps that you've been saving, now is the time to break those out and make yourself some of these great mini albums. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us today in the studio. And we hope to see you guys all very, very soon. Have a great one. Bye.